Okay. Let's make sure audio is coming through and good to go. Alrighty, hi everyone, this is Ionic, and I'm going to be showing one of these charm cutting spots I do as I've gotten higher in level. But let's get right into it. Tiered on to the Got to kind of pull all these guys and get them rounded up. Okay, good. I need to find the one that I did damage to. That's him. So one of the first things is doing the pull. You can only do damage to the mob that you intend to charm, or you're going to wreck the uh, aggro tables. So all the other ones right now just have social aggro. So I'm going to charm it. Send it back on the... And get ready to break. Get myself, get ready. Break. Perfect. Nine nine percent health. Perfect. Now this is a big reason why I don't don't do dark elf illusion here is because these die phase are KOS to most evil factions. I can run right around them and they don't care. That's a half of. Okay, find the one that was damaged. Self, get ready to break, and now. Ooh, perfect again. Ten percent health. Yeah, if you you got to be kind of careful when you got a whole lot of mobs in that charm kite pool because there's so much damage being smacked on your pet that you can die before you break it. Typically when I'm dotting, I want to use Fufu's Curtailing Chant first because it has an MR. It lowers the resist of the mobs. So it's more likely that the rest of the dots will land. Okay. Oh wow, look at that. Instantly already down. Get ready to break. Break. <laughs> um, one of the things that's nice to do is you see I got a message from Lout. Um, I made an uh, AFK macro. It says I can't type while kiting. <laughs> I'll respond when possible. Some of these kites take a while. And... Uh, just polite say, look, I can't respond immediately. I also made a macro for if anybody does a camp check, so I don't have to type it out. Um, it'll say what camps I'm taking up. Alright, that's the lowest health. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm taking the mob that has the lowest health, or at least the one I see, and sending it back. Perfect. Get ready to break. And now. 
I, I went a bit early on this one. I could have gone a bit later, but the thing is, so much damage was being done that I didn't want to lose out on the EXP. It's kind of a balance between killing them fast or killing them kind of slower, but with safety, that you're not going to have them die because you broke the charm too late. Kind of a balance between that. Okay, once I get them down to about six health, I can my dots will finish them off. I can move to the next target. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that corpses typically have a timer of about seven minutes, so you gotta get to it by then. Okay, get ready to break the charm. And now. Perfect. Oh, 4%. That was very close. So, uh, one of the things that will help you out really big when doing charm kiting is having a J boots. As you can see, I have it on. They will. Make sure that even if your Celos runs off, you're not going to get rushed accidentally. Another thing, if you're going to charm kite, I'd say a must have is that Goblin Kazuki ring, like I showed in the TD Raptors charm kite. Because having an on command charm break is so absolutely necessary for this if you want to be fast. It might break before. Yeah, it did. So, roughly what's going on here is I pull a bunch of mobs that are on the same faction table and uh, I'm just re-explaining what I did before. Pull a bunch of mobs on the same faction table, but you can only do damage to the one that you intend to pull. I mean, make your pet. All the rest of them have to be social aggroed, or you won't get the aggro mechanics right, where they'll beat down on your pet. So, you make the pull, charm one to make it your pet, and send it to attack the swarm. And then once your pet gets low health, you break the charm, however you can do it. Um, and the best method, again, is this Goblin Kazuki ring. It's the most uh, consistent. The only thing about it that I don't like is I have to stop all my songs before I can use it. And as well, uh, it's targeted. It, it's a targeted buff. It's not a self-only. So because of that, I have to... Um, I had to make a macro that targets myself. Okay, that was the lowest health one. Send it percent. Now it's going to go considerably slower, but I have a little bit more room for error with when I break this charm. One of the things you can do to kind of go faster is make your pets sit. Because they can't Avoid being hit when they're sitting down. Okay, charm's about to break. So it's a balance between speed and safety of getting that EXP. So I am going to get ready to break. And now. Perfect. A little bit more room for error when there's less moths beating down your pet, as you see. So this will be one little dot rotation, and then I'll move to the next. I 
it's 10 a.m. I think I should go to bed. Now there's just going to be three left. Perfect. One of the little tricks too you can know is that if you press F1 it selects yourself. If you press F1 a second time it selects the pet. So it's a real easy way where you don't have to click on the mob or even click on your uh, screen. Uh, click on the pet uh, option bar right there in order to target your pet. One, F1, yep. Get his health down a little faster. Once he gets down to below 20, I can... I can actually just send these two guys to beat each other. I'll show it. And target the low health guy. Put a snare on him because he's going to run away. And there we go. He's running away now. Low health. Oh, one thing why I keep track up always is this Corrupted Fawn. It's a level 55 Fawn that's KOS that I think it's a rogue. It can double backstab and basically one-shot you <laughs> as a bard. So you have to be kind of careful. All right, so in this scenario, since their healths are not the same, you want to kind of lower... You want to dot and artificially lower the health of one mob a bit more. Get it in line with what your pet's health is. Problem is when you do that, you're going to have to charm it over your pet. Because you won't... Yeah, there's such a huge discrepancy between your health. Okay, I need to get this, sen this one sentinel's health down a bit more. Before I recharm, I built more aggro though on this dotted pet, so I have to charm it because it won't break off. What's nice is when you have three left over, you don't have to um, kite everybody around. You can just beat the one mob down individually when it starts to run away. Okay, it's about time to charm it. And they should beat each other down pretty good. Yeah, I want to snare it. Snare both of them. Okay, there we go. Now I just gotta wrap these guys up. Um, let's see. This camp has a 14 minute and 30 second respawn for when you kill a mob. So, what I like about this suits camp is it's actually just long enough for me to med more mana back than I burn by charming, which is a very big deal. Because this is one of the only songs a bard does actually burn mana doing. Is that uh, charm that works up to 51, Solon's Bewitching Bravora. And you will eventually run out. And the problem with, the, as I mentioned before, is the bard mana regen is so horrible. You can only make it go faster by sitting. You can't take advantage of any clarity. You can't take advantage of your own mana regen or anything of that nature. So you just got to sit or stand. Sand is just one tick per one mana per tick, which is pretty bad. Okay. So 
Let me go sell this stuff. Now, one of the things I also like about this camp is look how incredibly close it is to vendors. Right here, plant the plant of growth. So incredibly close. And it actually is pretty decent EXP. I mean, I only got 1% after hours being in Velcators. You know, you get repops every 15 minutes. I might be getting maybe 4 or 5% EXP every hour. It's not that bad. It was a lot better at previous levels, but 58 is just garbage. So these mobs, they drop sentient armor, which is for Shadow Knights. Pretty good if you wanted to twink a character out. They drop various different gems. Um, they drop various quest gems, so you kind of want to check. Most of these quest gems sell for about 100 plat. Yep. Not sell that. I'm going to do a little vendor arbitrage. Get my... Get some of this garbage out. Perfect. That's so you reduce your weight. Point has weight in this game, and you want to kind of reduce it so you can stay out here longer. So these are the gems. You can sell these in Easy Tunnel and make some profit. Pretty good camp, though, for money. Definitely good camp. Or if you're trying to get uh, any of the gear in Velius, you need the stones. I have never seen any of the... Oh, man, did I put the timer on? No, I didn't. So, yeah, you want to keep a, a timer going so you know when to come back and check the camp. Um, 14 minute, 30 second response. Typically, I do this a little bit later at night just because it's almost always taken during the daytime. And it just sucks so bad. EX being in groups, the I mean, it's more fun to play in groups because you get more of the variety of what the bard class can actually do, how useful it really is. But the problem with it is the EXP gains are so much lower than by soloing, than doing it instead of soloing. That as a bard, you want to know how to group. You really should because you're trash. People are going to hate you if you don't know how to play the class properly in a group. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I don't have all day. You know, I want to get to 60. <laughs> I don't want to take months grouping, getting really slow EXP, and then having to risk dying. Just I, th I was more more likely to die in these really cramped dungeons where it's a pain in the butt to get reses than being in an outdoor zone as a bard. You're in your element when you're outdoors. I can run away. I'm not trapped. And you can see charm kiting is actually quite safe. It's so much safer than even uh, AOE dot swarm kiting because you can keep as much distance as you need. Um, as long as you're close enough to land the charm, you're good to go. So the spot I'm talking about is right here, number four on the map in Wakening Lands. Um, just these it suits of sentient armor. Yeah. Sentient. So they're around level 45. Not all of them are. They drop the sentient armor. I dropped this sentient axe, which has a voice graph, which I basically lets you speak through a pet. It's kind of weird. And then a bunch of different gems for Velius armor. And some of them are not real, so you kind of need it. They're not really used for uh, armor, so you need to check it on a wiki. Some of them are just vendor trash. But overall that is pretty much all there is to this camp um i think you can start heck at 45 and just do it all the way up to 60 to be honest most people i see doing this camp though are um wizards or druids because they can quad kite so they only kill four at a time but i personally as a bard because you're not limited by f by the four i think their spells only land on four mobs at one time as a bard, you're not limited by that. You can charm as much as you want. So I could, you know, charm 20 of these guys at one time if I wanted to, but um, there's only 10 spawns. So when pe people will camp check, you'll see CC 
6S or 4S. And what that means is six suits and four suits. So I take all 10 at a time if I can. It just goes faster. But sometimes I have to share. Big reason why I like coming later at night is because there's no competition. No one gets mad because I'm taking a camp all day long. And make pretty good money. I refill my bank up. And I get some armor gems too. I can sell for those out in DC. Or use them for myself. Like, uh, I got I got the gems for this myself. Killing these guys. And I think I tweaked out an SK. Yeah, I tweaked out an SK with the sentient armor. Off of doing this. But, righty. Leonie, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys later.